Alright, in this chapter we're going to start putting a diffuse coat on our model here. That basically means we're just going to start adding color information. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my normal map and I'm going to expand my mask because I'll be coming back and using them. Um, but most importantly, I'm going to go to my color group right now and I'm actually going to make another group inside of color. We're going to call this uh, front. Alright. We might be able to get away with just adding a universal color to everything here instead of having to go group by group with this. But for right now, let's just uh, now let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and go online. CG textures dot com. All right. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try to find a nice material for uh, our wall here. This will be by our base material. What kind of material was, is this small wall made out of? Is it made out of some kind of futuristic metal? Is it made out of some kind of uh, weird new concrete? What is this wall doing here? And that's the decision we as an artist need to make right now. Um, I'm thinking, where do we want to do with this? Let's just go and give it a uh, um, metal type of look, just for instance. So let's go and figure out what kind of metal we want. Mm, bare metal sounds fine, and we don't want we don't want a texture that is full of uh, detail. We want something if it does have noise that it's kind of uh, low key and low frequency. Uh, we don't want any distinguishable marks like you know these right here because when we repeat the te uh, texture we don't want it to be distracting that it's a definitely a repeating texture so and we don't necessarily have to look for anything tiled because I'm going to show us how we can make a tiled texture out of anything so I'm just going to peruse through here mm. and don't worry about color you can always change that in Photoshop as well I'm gonna grab this one right here. I like the look. I like the look of that. All right, let me log in here. And I'm just gonna download the small version. All right, we'll save this file. All right, now the burden on making it a repeatable texture falls on us. So we're just gonna go to open. I'll go to my downloads folder and open up my metal here. All right. The first thing we got to do is make this repeatable. So I'm going to double click background and rasterize this layer. And I'm going to go to filter, go to other, and I'm going to go to offset. Okay. And let's just pick a nice offset value here what that basically does is it shifts the uh, image up here and now the border edges of our image lie right here and down here so this is guaranteed to be repeatable now because it just shifts the border and center of our image alright so the offsets pretty powerful tool next we just gotta go in with our clone brush tool and just get rid of these seams so I like picking a uh, a part of it not too far away because you don't want to have too much of a crazy uh, just you know we want to have the same kind of hues and values next to our seam so I'm just picking it up and I'm just getting rid of my seams here alright now we have made a successful repeatable texture here so what we're going to do now is we're going to just select all and we're going to cut it and we're just going to plaster this everywhere let me make a whole new layer for this I'm basically going to plaster and cut and paste this all over my texture map let me turn on snapping Let's see snap so I can get it all lined up perfect together and let me pause this while I do this alright so I have my textured base material I just uh, made 
duplicate it all the way across my whole texture sheet. What we're going to do now is we're going to use my mask that I created earlier. Remember my UV Islands mask? I'm just going to right click or control and left click on base mask. Now I'll select all these UV Islands and then I'm going to come down to my textured base, inverse that selection and press delete. So now the texture I just made only lives on my uh, area right here, my uh, UV Islands rather. And I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go up to my UV and grab my Magic Select one. I'm going to select right in here because this is a negative space for the window. So I'm going to make sure I don't get confused by that. And I'm going to contract by 8 pixels. And I'm just going to go down here and delete it on my basic mask, delete it on my front wall and delete it on the new texture I just made. Just so we know that that is where the window's at. All right, great. All right, so with these base uh, textures laid down, let's start uh, hue shifting it to get the kind of color we want. Remember I, at the beginning I kind of said I wanted to have a, uh, a nice warm red type of look to it. So let's hue shift this bluish metal material I found into the red zone. So we go to hue and saturation or we can go to variations. Variations is pretty cool. I can take it to red, make it a little more yellow, make it darker, mm, maybe a little bit too red right now. But then I can go to my hue and saturation. I can desaturate a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. Pull down the saturation just a little bit. I just want a hint of red. There we go. So let's do a uh, mass save and see what we get. Alright, cool. Now we get that nice red shift. And I'm sort of happy about that. I can't really get a full picture of the final image because I don't have any specular maps on here. But I'm getting my uh, base color that, like I want it. Alright, so let me go back in and hide all my layers that I have. Alright. So I got a textured base down. Um, next, let's go and find all my recessed areas here. And we're just going to darken those areas because if it's recessed in, if we darken them, it's going to give the appearance that it's inset and light isn't getting into it as much. So we'll make a new layer and we'll call this in. And then what we'll do is we'll just go to my mask I have created here and we'll just go in and select every in I have. Let's go to fine detail. I made fine detail on another lecture. It's like these little lines I have drawn in here just to give it a little bit more oomph. So we'll hold down control and we'll, for each one we're going to come in here I'll reselect those and on my end uh, we'll give this like a multiply and I'll pick like a darker gray and I'll do a nice fill okay there's one end I'll go to my utility panel select these ends, go down to my end color, give it a nice dark feel. And I can always go in and adjust the strength and the opacity of this. And I'm just going to go down each one of my mask here and select the ends for each one. Okay. Do that one. Make sure that you're feeling it on the right layer each time. We'll do that one. Then on the left wall, there's my end for that. We'll fill that one in. And on my front wall, we'll fill that. All right, great. So now I have all my ends uh, darkened. And I'm going to adjust the opacity here so I can kind of dictate how I want that to go. 
I'm also going to go in and hand fill these recesses right here. I don't have masks for those necessarily, so I'm going to go in and create my own mask so I can fill those by hand. So we'll just go in here, select just this box. Be very careful you get it just right. We'll do a fill for that. And we'll select this little recess area. And we'll do a fill for that. Now, all my recessed areas are a little bit darker than the others. It's kind of like a almost like an ambient occlusion pass that we did. Alright, cool. And we can even go in here and shift the colors a little bit too. So I want to go to hue. And I'm worried that since it's just a gray value, maybe my saturation won't really pick up. Let's go before we do that, let's uh up my opacity so I can really see this darkness. And I can even go in and I think I'll make another layer. I'll select all my ends here. And in this layer, let's give it this kind of orangish swatch right here, dark red orange. Then I'll fill it with dark red orange. And then my opacity, I'll bring this down really low. And I get a result of like this kind of rusty inset color right here. I think I'll pull my opacity down just a little bit more. I want it to be a subtle effect. And I'll adjust the opacity like I had it before. And with playing with my opacities with these two layers here, I'll call this in color. And I can go here and call this in shadow. And I've effectively come in and really uh, tweaked my end colors right here. All right, so that's great. You know what? I don't even know if I'm going to group these by front or not. I think I'll just have layers itself inside of color. I'm not going to have any groups inside. Now we need to come in and make an out. Okay. Out. Uh, let's call this top bevel. Or let's just call this out bevels. Because now I'm going to come in. Yeah, I'll just call it out bevel because I'm going to come in and adjust the color of this bevel right on top of my front wall here. So I can select out and if I just only want to adjust the uh, color on the top bevel, I need to go to my marquee, select the subtract option right here, and then I can just come in and deselect all the selections I don't want to fill now. And I want to give this a really deep dark red. All right, so right now that's not that's not exactly what we want to have. We want to have it uh, maybe a little bit more subtle, and I don't want it to just be a solid color. So we'll just go to filter, and we'll add just a little bit of noise here. All right, not too much, but just enough. I like to go do monochromatic, so it's not hue shifting any of the distortion here. We'll give it like a ten percent. This is going to go in and make my red look less uniform. And it's a little bit too uh, noisy, so let's just give it a blur. All right, cool. And of course, I don't want it to be that red, so let's change the opacity a little bit. And there we go. I also kind of want to have uh, the bevels get darker at the bottom, a little bit lighter at the top. So I can just come in here now and select just the bottom bevel, make a new layer. We'll give it like a gray here and we'll fill that. All right. And of course, I don't want the gray going into anything else. All right. Let me just tweak these grays right here. And remember, I have it going over to the other side here. So I'll do that and then come in and delete those grays. And we'll give this a multiply, all right, because, you know, I don't want my gray to be my color. I want it just to darken here, all right. So we'll give this bottom bevel. And we'll make one more layer called mid bevel. And we'll, we'll flatten all these together at some point so it's not completely uh, disjointed with all these different layers here. All right. So we'll do this and go ahead and give this a multiply. 
and opacity will save us in the end because I'll really be able to tweak my levels there so I'll barely give this an opacity I want it to be a really subtle effect All right. maybe I'll darken this one and really set the opacity on this one alright great alright so let's just uh, let's just collapse all these layers because I think I'm done with my bevels alright cool and I'm going to come in here and blur it a little bit get rid of some of those lines those distinct lines sometimes if the blur is not working for you I like to use a block blur that way you can really go in and tweak the amount of blur you want just give it a blur of two and I might want to go in and desaturate it as well there we go so I'm effectively giving my object a little bit more color I want to desaturate it even more cool so let's do a mass save and see what it looks like Okay, I mass save hid that mid level, so let's just go up to mask right here and then do it this way. There we go. Now I have a nice red flourish on top here, and we're slowly starting to give this guy some color. We don't want it just to be an all flat red, we want to give it some color here and there. So uh, let's go in and now and change the color of these. Uh, panels that come out like so okay all right so so there's my top bevel so in order to uh, speed the video along I'm gonna come in here and pause it and just finish doing some of the uh, color corrections I wanna do and then I'll explain how I did it so we're not sitting through the process for too long alright so I'm finished doing some of the busy work and I'm gonna go in and explain what I've done I have basically just gone and made a layer called fine detail in and if we zoom in here we can see that I've given my fine little inlets a nice coat of red that way we can add some nice flourish of color throughout some of the pieces to break up the monotony of uh, these earth tones give us some flashy red uh, I've given the panel top above the window some color a nice desaturated red and I've set this layer to multiply so we can pick up all the nice shades of our base texture underneath kind of break up just the monotonous flat color of the red so we're just using multiply to add color to the already existing base I've made uh, a layer for my panel on the right called big and I've kind of breaking up I've given it kind of more of a greenish yellowish uh, hue Let's set that back to multiply. There we go. Maybe increase. And I'm looking at both of these panels here. And I kind of want them to be the same color. But I can see that this isn't as saturated or as bright. So let me go in and add a little bit more saturation to that panel here. I'm trying to get these two colors to match up. And we could do some color corrections and all that stuff. But I think just by eyeing it we can get it just right so I gave it more saturation and brighten it up a little bit and I've gave I've come here to the left panel and given it a flat color added a little bit of noise to it blurred the noise I've come here and I've given different uh, values to the panel that goes up to give the illusion that you know these are different levels of, uh, of surface you know the deeper lower part is a little bit darker because the top section may be giving it shadow and uh, yeah that's basically all I've done and remember all of my color solid color layers that I've been adding I've set them all in multiply alright let's see how it looks inside of Marmoset now so I'm going to select mass so my mass save works and let's see what it looks like here alright cool um, I could now go in this inside of the window area looks a little boring I could go in and select different 
panels that I've created here, uh, different colors, so we can break up the monotony of that, give the players a little bit more bearing if, if they ever decide to fly through it or if it's ever used as a fly through. Also, I might want to lighten up or uh, lower the opacity of my fine inset uh, areas right here. I think it's a little too red, a little too distracting here. But for intents and purposes, we're doing good. And whenever you're adding color and texture to your models, really pay attention to the harmony of the whole piece. Um, right now, I don't have a really good balance of color. So I got a lot of color going up here, but this part's just kind of left alone and boring. So maybe I need to rethink what I'm going to do with these parts and add a little bit more color. I could come in here and add that same kind of uh, greenish tint to these recesses down in here. That make a make, make a little bit more sense. Um, it'll add a little bit more balance to the color shifts. And also, think about what this object does in the game. Is it the objective that you're trying to go to, or is it just a piece of junk floating through space? If so, this is a piece of junk floating, floating through space. So, while we want to make sure that it's not too distracting, okay? That's why I haven't loaded this thing down with all this detail. Uh, I don't have rivets everywhere and damage everywhere. I have just some basic stuff that add a little bit of interest when you look at it, but it's not too distracting. Same thing goes for when you're adding color to your pieces. Uh, I find that whenever colors are more desaturated and earth toned that it's not as distracting to the player and it kind of just exists just to be there pretty much because remember at the very beginning we decided that this piece of debris it's just part of the whole it's not supposed to be your all inspiring mega ultra perfect art piece ever so actually I've decided what I'm going to do to add a little bit more variation to this model I'm going to come in and actually add green tints to these long downward inlets right here. That'll break up the uh, monotony of this color. And if I keep it that green tint desaturated enough, it's not going to make this guy look too distracting. So I'm going to go in, then my next step is I'm going to go in and pick certain panels in here, add some color to them. I'm going to desaturate the red lines here, and I'm going to go in and add some green tints to these recessed little areas I've made. I'm going to pause it while I do that and we'll come back and see the results. Alright, I made all those changes and we're back to the marmoset to see what we did. Um, like I said, I uh, diminished the red inlet a little bit just to make sure it wasn't too distracting. The biggest change can be seen in these uh, window panels that I did. I even created new normal maps and I had to make a new ambient occlusion map to get them in but I think the results are well worth it. It adds more of a, uh, I don't know, inviting uh, visual element. So, you know, the horizontal direction of the panels saying, hey, fly through it this way. You know, it's like saying, come on. And I've even come over here and added a little bit of that green to those recessed panels just to break up the color just a little bit. Now all that's left to do is give the damage some color and then go in and uh, maybe paint in some superficial uh, uh, burns or uh, damage, suit damage. Nothing that we're going to do with a normal map, just break up the variation of the color maps. <clears throat> maybe also give it a grunge map. That'll be the next chapter. Next chapter we're going to dirty it up a little bit. Alright, thanks.